for God so loved the world that he gave us his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life Bill and Harry were childhood friends they went to school together when it was time for college they joined the same college later both of them joined the army when the war broke out they were both fighting in the same unit bullets were flying left and right and it was dark all over suddenly they could hear the voice of one of the two friends it was the voice of bill he was shouting out harry please come and help me harry immediately recognized his voice but he had to get the consent of his captain before he could go and help him the captain said no i can't let you go because possibly we would have already lost bill and i cannot afford to lose you too harry kept quiet for a while again the voice came harry please come and help me harry remained quiet as the captain had refused to let him go earlier but the voice came again and again and he could not wait any longer harry said sir bill is my childhood friend and i have to go and help him the captain reluctantly let him go harry moved softly through the darkness and reached bill and slowly dragged the bill back to a level ground when the captain saw him he was already dead the captain shouted at harry and said i told you that it was useless going to save you have risked your life and you could have been also killed you made a mistake then harry replied captain i did the right thing when i reached the bill he was still alive and the last things he said was harry i knew you would come true love consists in laying down your life for your friend human power may not permit you to sacrifice your life for others but god's love and power is manifested in god's self gift in his son in the gospel according to saint john chapter 3 verse 16 we read for god so loved the world that he gave us his only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life in the gospel according to saint john chapter 3 nicodemus the wealthy pharisee and a member of the sanhedrin meets jesus by night and begins a long religious discussion but as we read in chapter 3 verse 3 jesus said very truly i tell you unless you are born again you cannot enter the kingdom of god Jesus is teaching him that rebirth by water and the spirit is essential condition for entering the kingdom of God. Jesus explains to him what it means to be born again. To be born again was to be professing one's faith in the son of God who was to be lifted up on the cross. A reference is also made to the Old Testament story given in Numbers chapter 21 verse 4 to 9. On their journey through the wilderness, the people of Israel murmured and complained, regretting that they had ever left Egypt. To punish them, God sent a plague of deadly serpents. When the people repented and cried for mercy, God instructed Moses to make an image of a serpent and hold it up in the midst of the camp, so that anyone who looked upon the serpent might be healed through the power of God. The message given to Nicodemus is that like Moses bronze serpent Jesus too must be lifted up on the cross as a means of our salvation. Jesus was lifted up twice first on the cross and second at his ascension into heaven. Just as the cross was the way to glory for Jesus so it is for us. We can if we like refuse the cross that every Christian is called to bear. This is an unalterable law of human life however that without the cross there is no crown believing in Jesus would mean that we are ready to surrender ourselves to him in love recognizing him as a son of god the catholic doctrine teaches 
that salvation is by faith and grace. We read in the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians chapter 8 verses 8 to 10. By grace we are saved through faith and this is not our own doing, it is the gift of God. Paul teaches us that although we don't deserve anything from God on our own merits, God has chosen to love, save and give life to us because of his great mercy and love. In the second book of Chronicles chapter 36 verse 15 we read, Early and often did the Lord God send messengers to the people out of deep compassion for them. Second book of Chronicles describes the history of Israel from the reign of Israel's first king Saul to the end of Judah's exile in Babylon. This is both a period of successful development which can be considered as God's reward for fidelity and it is also a period of tragedies and military defeats which could be considered as God's punishment for infidelity. Their infidelities caused them to lose the temple, their homeland and their language until they came to their senses, recognizing their own sinfulness and crying out to God for mercy. It was then that God came to their rescue, choosing to work through the pagan king Cyrus to return them to their homeland and to help them rebuild his temple. This is a clear sign that God sends his messengers out of his mercy to save us. But in the fullness of time, God gave us his only son. This is the truth contained in what is called the Gospel of Gospels, which is the core of Christian doctrine in John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. So as disciples of the Lord, we are called to respond to God who loved us so much to give us his only son. By believing in him and by becoming channels of God's love to people around us. We are called to love like Christ. Loving like Christ would mean that we become selfless. That we are able to sacrifice ourselves, even our life for others. Because God is love and love is God. When we love like Christ, God's love will be made manifest in and through us. Let us proclaim with the psalmist, O Lord, remember me with the favors you show to your people.